but it's hard to be a Hans Zimmer and get all of the big movies in Hollywood. You know, it's really, it, it's, it, it's not something that happens to 99.9% of the, of the composers. So is, um, in the eyes of most screen composers, is it true that Hans Zimmer is seen as the 800 pound gorilla in the room, you know, who's just got this center of gravity that everyone's going around? Yeah, for sure. He is, I mean, and don't get me wrong. He, he, he's a very talented man, a very smart man. And he's done, he's, he's put in the, the work, you know, and he came in at the shift in film scoring that just he, he was perfect for, and he's always delivered to any filmmaker. So whenever there's a problem with a score in, in, in Hollywood, whether it's the composer and the director, not getting exactly the, you know, not, not coming up with something that's, that they, are both happy with or whether they test the movie and the audience doesn't love it or has a comment about the music and then that composer needs to go. Usually it's like, okay, we know Hans Zimmer delivers it. Yes, he has a, a bunch of composers working with him and he can turn around the score in two weeks if necessary because he wow. just pull in all the, all the forces and pull in everyone into whatever project it is and get it done. So he has built an empire where things get done, but through a lot of hard work, I mean, he's a, a, a dedicated man who's been a, around for a long time and is probably the hardest working composer in the in the industry to this day. I, I very, say. very German of him to be like that, but just yeah. hyper efficient and very, very um, just solid. I mean, I've seen him live. He seems like a pleasant person. But when I watched his um, description on Mix with the Masters recently, and this is to your point of saying about the shift in scoring, which we're going to talk about in a second, um, he was saying that a computer is as much of a musical instrument that needs practice as a piano, a guitar, uh, or whatever else. And that he set him, Hans Zimmer set himself up to be prepared for the big shift by getting very, very good at working with samples. Uh, yeah. That's what he attributes his part of his success to. And so, yeah, let's yeah. talk about that. Let's talk about the transformation. It, what, what has changed? I, I think a, a lot has changed from the amount of music you have in a film to I think what goes along with that is if you have to like studios nowadays tend to fill a movie up with, with music, you know, they're a little afraid of leaving the, the conversational gaps, you know, the, the awkward silences. It's like, they feel like music helps everything at all times. So let's just put all the music wallpaper, everything in and then, there won't be silences. The pacing will always be good and, and things like that. But what comes along with that is the more music you have in a film, the less melody you can have. Because if you always have a melody playing, you're distracting the audience or you're distracting. So I think there was a shift to like less melodic uh, elements, you know, and also you have a lot more other elements, like it's more visually more impressive graphics, a lot of sound effects and, and sound design. And all of that is sort of, fighting for the audience's attention. So how much can you, before, if you listen to like a um, Hitchcock movie, the, how much work the music was doing, you know, you, you see that scene, that shot, like it's very slow and the guy just running and the, the music is blasting in the background. That's what was keep giving us that sense of urgency. Nowadays, I mean, the, they shoot scene, action scenes and it's, it's like, it's unbelievable what they are able to do between visual effects and, and, techniques of, of shooting and the pacing is there already the music is just there to give another layer and then the explosions another layer the sound effects the visual so it's really a, 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 a how do you call it like a blow to your your senses right watching a big movie like that so how much melody can you have how much so there was this shift to more like the music will help with the pacing the music will will give that sense of like edge of your seat and maybe color something but there was that shift of like less melodic less thematic uh, scores less melody less the john williams uh, bernard herman type type of music you know which which is okay i do i do a lot of that too i like but whenever you're able to use melody to really connect with the audience it's to me it's the best and there there was also a major shift in technology where you're able some of the scores i do nowadays it's just me and maybe me and my assistant here in the studio and we deliver the whole thing and it sounds massive, you know, it's just the, the ability to create at, at a reasonable budget, have, have the equipment where you're able to record stuff uh, with very high quality, even if you're at a home studio. 
But with that, with technology, also there were a lot of more challenges that came about than where you're able, you have to be able to mock up the scenes. I mean, the director has to sit in the couch behind there and hear what the scene will sound like. And it's supposed, uh, I mean, he, is, he expects to hear something as close to the final score as, as possible, you know? And a lot of times we end up like I mock up a scene, they watch it and then they get used to that sound. And then we go and record an orchestra afterwards to replace that. And they feel like it's not like the demo maybe was better because it was, it was punchier and it was, so can we go back to the demo? I'm like, we spent a hundred thousand dollars to record this orchestra. We're going to go back to the demo. And then it's like a, a, a way of finding of like maybe combining some of the elements of the demo that are really tight and really, because in, in the, in my computer, I can have a 500 piece orchestra playing, it, I, I don't think it has the same feel like you don't feel it like you feel when you when you hear the players really playing it, you know mm. so maybe a combination of those two which Hans Zimmer is also one of the guys who like you said started this it's like he was the one recording the first sample libraries but just for himself it wasn't to sell like Spitfire or but he would go to London and record these amazing musicians playing and then he would build his own sample library just for himself and the people who worked at remote control and then he would build like scores on top of like you would record the live orchestra but not take out all of yes. the all, all of what was mocked up you know he would keep some of that because it gives it more punch and more and sounds bigger and bigger and people so one of the score. transformations that the hands drove through was that the mock-up was no longer going to be the crap version before it became real the mock-up was actually f for the first time integral to the score and perhaps that was driven by the technological developments the fact that you could have very good sounding samples in the mock-up for sure so at the same time while while the technology saves our lives and and allow us to do amazing things it also i mean uh John Williams, I think Spielberg would hear the, the, some of the themes on piano and then he would hear the final score at the scoring stage along with the composer, you know, yeah. that's it. There weren't, there weren't these dreadful rounds of approvals of like, can you change this? Oh, this is a little too slow. Can you speed this part up a little bit and then slow down the other one? And then really quick, like they feel like we can do anything, transpose anything, do, and, and we can do almost anything with computers too, but it, it became a lot more, like sometimes you're spending as much time crafting and making it sound right and, and, and really mocking up that scene as you are writing it. You, you know, you don't just write a, a cue on piano. The orchestrator helps you or orchestrate it for orchestra and then you go on the scoring stage and, re and record. No, everything is cuts are changing multiple times before they would only start scoring close to a final cut nowadays. Even in the final cut, sometimes you've already scored with the orchestra. The movie's still changing afterwards. They're still having to do final edits to, to the score at the dubbing stage when they're dubbing the movie. So every, everything has changed so much as far as, as technology. And budgets have, have, sh have shrunk, surprisingly enough. I mean, before they would get, they would have more money to, to record. And now we have to be able to do more. And the budgets in general have shrunk in, relations to, in relationship to what they used to be. So... No, but we real. have more opportun but we have more opportunities to do different stuff. So now there are video games, there's you know, it's it's endless the amount of media and content being created that actually needs music.